Much like we did last week, we'll be titrating an acid with a base. Instead of using strong acid hydrochloric or strong hydrochloric acid this week, uh, we'll be using um, a weak acid, acetic acid in this instance, and still titrating it with the strong base, sodium hydroxide. So we're going to go ahead and get 25 milliliters uh, using one of the balloon pipette things again um, of the acetic acid and go ahead and put it in another one of our 250 milliliter earlier flasks. And we can go ahead and empty this into the flask like so. Just like last week, we're going to go ahead and add 75 milliliters of pure distilled water uh, into the flask with the acid, like this. Uh, and you can go ahead and swirl this around. This will be your acid solution this time around instead of the hydrochloric acid. Remember, uh, we're using the acetic acid HC2H3O2. This time around, we'll be using uh, a mechanism that holds a pH probe and spins a magnet inside of it for us. So we can go ahead and put our magnet into the flask like that. Uh, and then once this is on here, we can go ahead and mix the solution like this using the magnet this time around uh, versus having to throw it by hand. We're going to need to put some of the sodium hydroxide base into our uh, burette here. Uh, it's not all the way full. Um, so what we need to do in order to do this is take the sodium hydroxide, take one of these in order to get the sodium hydroxide in there um, because it's a pretty small opening, um, and then go ahead and pour some in, in slow amounts until we get nearer to the top of our burette. So we've reached almost the top of the burette, but this should be fine. Um, in order to titrate, we need as close to 50 milliliters as we can get. We have almost uh, 46 and a half milliliters in here, so this will be a fine um, sodium hydroxide burette this time. So we're all good to go, so you can take the pH probe uh, and put it through the electrode support on this apparatus. We're going to need it to... We're going to need it to rest in the distilled water. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put it in the distilled water to rest for the time being. like so. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get our burette over the Erlenmeyer flask. This is about the best that we can do with that currently. Um, and we should be able to turn this on so that the magnet begins to spin uh, and we'll mix the acid and the base when we begin to add the uh, base to the acid. So here we are with our pH probe all set up. Uh, we need to change the mode. We need to change it to vent base, change the event name to uh, volume of the acetic acid, C2H3O2. Uh, and the units on the volume is going to be milliliters, just like it was last week. You should see that you have a data table and a graph here now. Uh, and we can go ahead and begin collecting the data. The first measurement that we need to take is actually the initial concentrate or the initial pH value uh, before we add any of the sodium hydroxide. Uh, so we can go ahead and put the pH electrode into here, uh, being wary of the magnet uh, so that we do not end up hitting the pH probe. This is actually the initial pH level of the acetic acid uh, mixture. So we can go ahead and keep this value when zero milliliters have been added. 
and key point, you should see a plot, uh, a dot plot on the graph, as well as the data slot set having a new point in it. So we can go ahead and begin, and we're, this time we're going to be doing it in about two milliliter increments. Um, we record the initial uh, marking on the burette, about 2.63. Uh, this is just going to be the rough estimate, two points, uh, the rough estimate time, because we're going to be doing this titration two, uh, two times in order to get a rough estimate of where the equivalence point is, and then a better representation graphically. Um, so this time we can go ahead and begin. I said about two milliliters, but you can actually go a little bit more. I think uh, for the rough estimate time, we're going to go about three milliliters at a time. So again, we want to let this sit and mix for a little bit, and then move the pH electrode into the flask. We've now added the first amount of this um, of the acetic acid. Oh, sorry, we've now added the first amount of the sodium hydroxide, uh, and the pH level, as you can see, has changed. We added about 2.99 milliliters. Again, you can go ahead and keep the point, and then continue on, going about 3 milliliters at a time. We then want to take the electrode back out the titration and back into the distilled water. And then you can add more of the sodium hydroxide. We see it mixing now. And we can go ahead and put our pH electrode back into the flask. After adding the second amount, again, you can see the pH level has indeed increased. This time we added about 6.19 milliliters in total. And again, you can go ahead and keep the new point. Uh, and just keep going along this process. Again, you can keep the point, 9.17 milliliters in total. You can see here that the pH level after the three milliliters after this are really, really, really climbing. Um, this tells you that you need to be, the next time when we do this again, um, we're going to be more careful about how uh, much of the NO, NaOH that we have added. So yeah, the pH level has stabilized at about 10.60, give or take. Again, this is with 29.84 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. We need to once again set up our graph here on graphical analysis. It's going to be event-based. The event name is going to be the volume of the NaOH, this time getting it correct, uh, with milliliters. And you can go ahead and be done. Um, it's going to be the exact same thing, making the same... Um, acetic acid uh, solution, as well as putting the uh, sodium hydroxide into the acetic acid and measuring the pH levels. So you should be getting more and more familiar with how to do these sort of titrations. As we've done so many times, the initial pH is the first value that we need. Uh, it's stabilized um, here at about 3.43. Go ahead and Collect, collect the data and keep the point. Uh, this is after zero milliliters of sodium hydroxide have been added. 
This time we'll be going in smaller increments, probably about, mm, I'd say, 2 milliliters or so until we get to about 26 and a half milliliters, the point in which the pH level really began to spike last time when we did the test trial. That's really why we do the test trials, to know about when to start slowing down to get the best curve possible. So the first point that we can do is at 2.12 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Go ahead and keep the point. Again, you should see uh, the dot begin to be, you should see the dots being plotted on the graph as well as the data table being formed over here on the right. Next point's at about 4.04 milliliters. Uh, again, keep the point, you should see the graph being plotted as well as the data table over here. Next one at 5.93 milliliters. I Uh, so like we said, this is about the point in which we want to start slowing down to about half or so milliliter increments, um, the 26 and a half milliliter mark. So here we are, we're now finished uh, with the weak acid and strong base. You can tell it's a weak acid because it starts with a low pH, has a bit of curve upward, then straightens out, and then goes back up uh, here, around here at the, the equivalence point. Um, so yeah, this is the second week that we've done one of these acid-based titrations, so hopefully you have a good grip on how to do it. If you need this for the lab report, uh, feel free to take a screenshot of the data. Um, and yeah, that's it for this one. Hopefully it's helped you uh, again on the second week of acid-based titrations.